Okay, kids, we are going to do lesson five today, and this is the problem set. And you still need to have a few pieces of uh, your math materials close by to help you get through this. First of all, I want you to have your place value chart. Okay, you're gonna need this because we're gonna be using all of these words here, all the names of the place value positions. Keep that handy. Also, you're going to have the notes already done from class. This is going to be the first page. Okay, you can pause your video if you didn't get all these notes from earlier in the day. Okay, and on the back, we have more notes at the top. And you can go as slowly as needed to make sure you get all these notes. But we will have done this in class by the time you're watching this video. So keep your notes handy so that you can look at them as support. Because, you know, we were talking about converting in lesson four and I said, oh, we'll probably do more of that next week. And sure enough, we are not doing converting. We are totally changing. That's what's so fun about this program. It really keeps us on our toes changing every single day with something new and different. Anyway, we're going to roll with it and uh, we're going to have a good time talking about place value with the real names of the place value positions, not doing conversions with metric units. So we're going to take these words and now that you know how to read them correctly, we're going to take the word form and turn it into decimal numerals. So the first one's done for you. We'll skip that. Four thousandths. There it is in decimal form. And you know that the thousandths is three places over from the decimal. One, two, three. So you also know that every time you end with this word, that that's where the last digit will fall. So if I have 24, then the four from the 24 would go in the thousandths position. And so your study aid is to fill in from the decimal the place value positions, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and fill in the digits where they belong. So if this ends with 24 thousandths, and I have to end here, then it would be 24. And of course, we can't leave this blank, so it's zero. And of course, in the book, they will always have a zero in the ones place when there is no whole number. That's just the way they do it. So uh, for C, one and 324 thousandths. And so the key on these is to watch out for the word and, because what does and mean? You're right, it means decimal. So it's one and. So that's your clear beginning. And then if you have thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, you are going to write the number as it is read to the right after the end. 324 thousandths. And this one doesn't have any zeros because 324 looks just like that. Read this one. 608 thousandths. So there's no and. So I don't have any whole numbers. I need to get down to the thousandths position, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and I need to write the number 608. 608. Now what about this one? This is where it gets crazy. 608 thousandths. And you might say, isn't that what I just wrote? And I would say, ha ha, they caught you. And is the decimal. So what is the number to the left? Well, it's 600. Okay, now that is the six in the hundreds place, zero tens, zero ones. Now what about this? Eight thousandths. Again, watch out, spelling. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. If I only have eight thousandths, then the eight belongs here. So what goes here? Zeros. Telling you, you might see something like this on a quiz or a test where they have very similar numbers, but you have to watch out 
watch out for the and, watch the spelling. This is one thing, okay? But this is another. If you don't have the and, you're talking about a decimal fraction. So we change to a fraction form and just reading it properly, 46 thousandths. So we want to, we have zero, we want to fill in the place value positions to the right, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. I need to write 46. 46 ending in the thousandths position looks like this, but we can't leave this blank. It has to have a zero, holding that zero in the tenths position. Very, very important to hold that place. If you don't put a zero there and you just have 0.46, that is no longer 46 thousandths. It would be 46 hundredths. We don't want that because that's not what it says here. Okay, next one. Three and a fraction. 946 thousandths. Three and 946 thousandths, again, we have all three digits in a place value position. We don't have any zeros. It's just how the number is written normally, so it's going to go all the way out to the thousandths place. Finally, we have another whole number here, 200, and 904 thousandths. It's really important in this lesson to read these numbers correctly. 904. You don't say 900 and 4 because and means a decimal, okay? And you can't have two decimals in a problem. Now let's move on to the next one. Express each of the following values in words. This is just really being careful about your spelling and the THS, okay? This is a 5 in which place? Tenths, hundredths thousandths. This is the five in the thousandths place, so you would simply write five thou sand th s. Okay, you've got to have the THS, otherwise it's five thousand, which is way over here to the left. Okay, this one is eleven. Read everything to the left as you would normally. 11. Then what do we do with this? We say and. Then you read the number as you would and then give it the place value position of the last digit. So I would read 37. And then I would give it the place value position where the last digit lands, thousandths. Okay, so it's 11 and 37 thousandths. Then we have a super long number, so I'm gonna show you just the finished product so I don't have to take all my time writing it, but you would read it, remember, all the way out to the left, say and for the decimal, read the number as you would, and put the place value position for the last one. Real quick, 403 and 608 thousandths. You can pause and copy that down, but I wanna be quick about these and talk you through when I can. Now at the bottom of the page, they already have this one done for you. So remember when writing an expanded form, when we stretch it out and expand this number, okay, from its regular standard form into this crazy looking uh, stretched out formula, okay, that it's going to be important as we go through to put parentheses around the numbers that you're going to be multiplying first so that you can solve for the correct value, okay? So, moving right along, turn the page. At the top, we have 249 thousandths. And you can write it, uh, and I blew through the directions as usual. Uh, you can write it in expanded form using fractions or decimals. So I usually like to do 
both of them kind of overkill just to show you that you can do it either way. So if I have 249 thousandths, I'm gonna start with the two. Well, it's two in the tenths place, so I'm going to have two times one tenth. Now, you can also have fraction form, two times one tenth, whatever you're comfortable with, okay? But that is a problem unto itself. To that, we will add four in the hundredths place, four times one one hundredth or four times one one hundredth whichever way you like to see it whichever way it makes more sense for you to that we will add the nine times one one thousandth because that's where this digit is living zero point zero zero one I don't want to change the value of the nine so it's nine times one to get the nine, but I just want it to be in this place value position. Or nine times one one thousandth. Now, when you add all these together, okay, you will get two in the tenths place, four in the hundredths place, and nine in the thousandths place. That's what you get when you do these calculations, okay? It also says to show using a place value chart. Okay, and so you can label it with your ones and your decimal and your tenths and hundredths and thousandths. And we have zero ones, and then we have the decimal. And when you solve for this, two times one tenth is two tenths, two tenths. Four times one one hundredth is four hundredths. Nine times one one thousandth is nine thousandths. And that's how we solve these, okay? Same here, but you're gonna have a longer chart and uh, more place value positions. Move on to number four, okay? Write a decimal for each of the following using a place value chart to help you if necessary. Again, keep this handy so that you have all of the place value positions and you don't skip any. Now, this is where the, the parentheses come in handy, okay? Because I need to know where the pluses are and where the multiplication symbols are. If you find a multiplication sign, you should put parentheses around it because we need to put this together in one operation. This is the in-between that we're going to add four times one, two. Now this right here, in the book, I'm not crazy about the way they do this because I want a bracket here saying, hey, six times one-tenth, nine times one one-hundredth, two times one one-thousandth. So this is an operation. And with the plus and the times being so uh, possibly confusing for you kids, I don't like that. So I want to bracket those right away. I want to bracket parentheses plus multiply plus, leave that out, multiply that plus multiply this. That's going to help you if you set it up like that. That will help you understand where to put your digits when you put it all together. Okay, so put a big equal sign here so you can show the answer. Now I need place value positions. I have seven times 10. What place value position is that? That's 70, it's the tens position. So I'm gonna have seven times 10, 70 in the tens. Do I have a ones? Yes, four ones, decimal. What about the tenths place? What digit is there? Six. What's next? Nine hundredths. What's next? Two thousandths. Sorry, it's just easier to do it this way, especially on the edge of the book there. Okay, so we're gonna do this for each one. 
five times 100. I need a number in the hundreds place. Five hundreds. Three tens, that would make 30. Now eight times one tenth. Do I have any ones? <gasps> no, I don't. But I still have to have a digit there. You must hold it with the zero. Then I have eight times one tenth. That is eight in the tenths place. But look, I don't have any hundredths. I only go straight to thousandths. That means I will have a zero in the hundredths and go straight to the thousandths for the nine. Now if you read the total, the whole number together, it would be 530, hundreds, tens, ones, 530 and 809 thousandths. Remember, this is tenths, this is hundredths, this is thousandths. You have to say the name of the place value position where your last digit lands. Okay. Finally, we have a number uh, with thousand. So I'm going to capture that. Remember, leave the pluses in between the multiplication problems. Put parentheses around to capture that problem. Or brackets around here. Equals four times a thousand. Four thousand. That's the thousands position. Two times a hundred, two hundreds. Seven times one, that means I have no tens. No tens, no tens, but I do have ones. Then put the decimal, then look for tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. I don't have tenths. I don't have tenths. I do have hundredths, how many? Three. I do have thousandths. How many? Four. So the number you created was 4,207 and 34 thousandths. So it's kind of, they're big long numbers, but when you break it down and you look at these little place value positions individually, it should make it a lot easier to read these big numbers. Okay? Now, the last problem, as quick as we can, Mr. Pham wrote, read it correctly, two and 619 thousandths. I know you guys are gonna say 2.619. Well, Christy says it is two and 619 thousandths. Amy says it's two ones, six tenths, one hundred and nine thousandths. Who is right? Well, if you, it says use words and numbers to explain your answer. It's correctly read this way, but Amy's right about the place value positions. But if you read it correctly, you will say two and six hundred nineteen thousandths. Okay? Now, I know I went on really long today, so, oh my word, 18 minutes, are you kidding me? Um, anyway, I'm gonna shut it off and we will talk more in class. If you have questions, always be sure to join our call. See you soon.